It has been. Yes, indeed. it has. But I enjoyed our earlier meeting and so forth, and I'm glad you had made me available of this. Uh, I mean, uh, aware of the Urantia thing. And uh, welcome in the audience. Welcome very, very much to Conversations. Pleasure to welcome to the program Nick Curto, and he's a Urantia book reader. The Urantia book. We're going to be talking in considerable uh, extent about that. And he's also um, co-founder, I believe, and co-director of uh, Disclosure Network U uh, New York. And those are two things that identify him uh, here in the graphics. And uh, Nick, welcome very much to conversation. Thank you so much, Harold. It's great to be back. Oh, it's so good to see you again. It's been a while and everything. I wonder if you could, we're going to talk about your ranch and we're going to show some images and that sort of thing, which is a big subject and growing, as I understand, sure and so is. forth. And also the Disclosure Network, which I think has to do with some as questions of um, of maybe uh, esoteric to the normal conscience and concerning uh, contact with other systems and universe, that sort of thing, and everything. But could you just share briefly, maybe just a five minute thing, a rundown on your own background, born and raised, education, that sort of thing, and maybe bring it up to how you got in touch with this um, esoteric, uh, and it's for many people's way of thinking, the Arantia and the Disclosure Network, but your own background, education, that sort of thing. Of course, uh, thank you, Harold. Well, um, let's see, I was born in Springfield, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and the uh, home of basketball. Nope. Is that true? Yes, it is. They have a multi-million dollar basketball museum there that's unbelievable. If you're ever in Springfield, that's what to see. Springfield's near Northampton? No, uh, no, no. It, it's, um, it's just before on uh, 91, before you get to Northampton. Uh-huh, up yeah. in that area, Amherst and uh, all that. Western Massachusetts. Right, there's uh, a cultural enclave out there, I think, that area. It certainly area. is. I'll be up there this weekend. Oh, really? Going Enjoy. Going up there to see the leaves. I wonder. I'm getting a little late for the leaves, but it gets dangerous. Those leaves are so beautiful. That's true. Drive carefully. Don't go into a swamp. <laughs> like I did one day and went off the road because of a maple Ouch. tree, but I won't go into all that. So, uh, so, f so from there, and uh, I still have uh, relatives, of course, and friends in, in that area, mm -hmm. and uh, grew up there, went to high, uh, Tech High mm -hmm. up in Springfield, Massachusetts, okay. and went to the uh, museum, uh, the Fine Arts Museum, studying art when okay. I was a kid. So, okay. And that was an amazingly wonderful experience. Uh, I wow. certainly have a lot of gratitude for that time. Yeah. Then I, uh, I uh, uh, tried to get into the Massachusetts College of Art, which is in Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. And uh, I waited for that letter, and finally my mother said, Nick, the letter is here. And I opened it up and it said, you've been accepted. And they only had 200 people accepted at that time. Right. So and why had she not let you know that? Oh no, the letter came in the mail. Oh, and we, I was waiting to see if my if I was going to be able to go to mm -hmm. the college and to go. If to you'd the, been accepted, yeah. If I had been accepted, right. And, and that's the one I really wanted to go to. Right. And that was uh, again such a great opportunity, and uh, it was the best four years. So I take it you went. I, oh yes. Yes, right. Yes, I did. Yes, <laughs> the I did. resultant of that, yeah. And, uh, and uh -huh. of course, discovered Boston and tried to develop my artistic talents. No, uh, artist. Artistic's a big word. Painting or what? Uh, no, no. It was really graphics, okay, and it was yeah. advertising design. Okay. So I really majored in that. I right. was also the president of the Newman Club, which is a Catholic club at, right. at uh, the college, mm -hmm. and the uh, which I uh, enjoyed very much. Okay. And, uh, did that and uh, graduated. That was important to you, the Catholicism and that? It was. My okay. aunt, on my father's side, the Italian side, my, my father's side was, uh, had uh, an aunt, my aunt, uh, mm. Sister Cecilia, uh -huh. who was uh, a nun in the Catholic Church. Okay. So we used to uh, visit her in the convent and mm -hmm. she'd be stationed in various places. Mm -hmm. So there was always that going on, a, a little in uh, your consciousness, uh, there was. Mm -hmm. There really was that mm -hmm. and, spiritual. Uh, and uh, I yeah. loved her. I miss her. Yeah, I, miss yeah, her. She's I know. A wonderful yeah. woman. Uh -huh. And uh, and uh, so so then uh, after college, I knew I had to get in a bus with my portfolio mm -hmm. and go to New York City. Had to go to New York. The it Big was, Apple. You had I, to there call. Was no, there was you no know, really, fans uh, or butts, right? There really wasn't. It was. Ex I had to be here. I knew uh, that. Right. And so there I was in Times Square with my book on how to survive. <laughs> and I think it was $25 a day or yeah, something. Yeah, right, right. I got a hotel there, the yeah. Rosoff Hotel, if I remember right, a uh, little hotel right there, yeah. uh, in, upstairs from a famous restaurant. Mm. And, and that's where I was, and looking for uh, a job. As a graphic designer. Graphic designer, uh, art director. You were, you, were you aware of, you, uh, you maybe to you, uh, of, of the cyber things that were coming in that? Computers and that? It was, or no? it was just beginning. Just beginning. I, CAD I remember, CAM uh, and that kind of thing they I had for architecture. I remember one typographer uh, who used to do the, you know, the hot type where they yeah. 
pour right. that type in. Yeah. And he said, oh, this, this cold type stuff, it's a fad. It will never take. Yeah. And went, right. Wow. How wrong was that? Cold type, would that have been linotype? Or that cold type would be anything uh, with photography, yeah. which, of course, now is the standard. Yeah. But at the time, uh -huh. uh, the, uh, oh, the, the printers had said it will never, it will never go. Yeah. Right. Of course, they were, they were wrong on that one. Right. It certainly right. swept the industry. So We've got people in television or in film in television. They're kind of combined who... Uh, who swear by film and they say, I've seen high definition television, it looks like 35 millimeter to me. But they'll say the film just has a warmth and so forth and there's people uh, you know, tuned in to what they're used to. And That's so right. Forth. But the technology moves on and everything's going cyber now, isn't it? Quickly. Yeah, amazingly exponentially fast. almost, yeah. It, it's, 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 it's up there. So, so that was... So uh, welcome to Times Square. Yeah, Times you Square You were a young was, man, 25 or something like that? Or, and, yeah. and looking for my, uh, really my spiritual home as well because I had been Catholic all my life. I was right. raised Catholic. But I really wanted to reach out and uh, really take a taste of uh, other spiritual callings, other religions. And that was part of my agenda here is that I knew that New York would be an amazing place to do just that, right. which it was. Yeah. And so that was a, also a part of uh, that whole experience. Got into Vedic stuff? I mean, you know, the, the Indian, the Hindu, Buddhist uh, things? I had, I had friends that meditated uh -huh. and, uh, of course, p uh, other friends from uh, just, just very different uh, Yeah, they're all backgrounds. here in New York, it seems. How wonderful is that? Let me share a thing with you, Nick. I talked to some people. I got a friend who happens to be now president of the General Assembly at the UN. That's Ali Trachy. He's from Libya. And I mean, but he, there's 192 nation states in the world, and there are sizable communities of 189 of them in the New York City area. Everybody in the it's world incredible. is here, That's which I think is wonderful. It is. It's, yeah. it's the reason, one of the reasons to be here. Yeah. And I, I love that. I love the diversity of that. Right. And so that was a part of uh, the picture. And I got a job fairly soon uh -huh. uh, in, a, in a small uh, agency and then uh, <coughs> an insurance company. Uh, and then another studio, so as art director, so uh -huh. that I could do that, I could I could do some writing also because right. I do write. Okay. And uh, and that was an amazing experience uh, to uh, pick the models, uh, do the photography, yeah, and so forth. And so and I then, did that. And then you were branching out with the spiritual longing or spiritual understanding, and so because we want to get to the main theme we want to talk about today, which is this magnificent book, the Urantia book. And maybe you could share, how did you get to that? When did you first pick up on it? And because you're a reader of that now, Certainly. a group of people, and maybe you could get to that and we could sure. get to. Uh, uh, I was going to um, St. Patrick's for a long time. That mm -hmm. would be a natural place to go. On Fifth Avenue. On Fifth Avenue, of course. And then from there, I went to All Souls Unitarian Church. Okay, Unitarian is a different ball of wax in Catholic. Two years. Yeah. And that's, of course, a smorgasbord yeah. of all the great world religions. Why did you go to Unitarian when you could have just been sticking with the Good Mother Church, uh, the Vatican-based, uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, I had Were you getting venturesome in your yes, thinking? Yes, I was. Protestant thing? Yes, yeah. I was. And I, I wanted to uh, pick up on the other uh, religious experiences and the uh, Unitarian Church does that every Sunday you could, morning. You can get into almost anything in the name of Unitarianism. Yes, it's you very can. good that way, I would think. Which was wonderful. Yeah, and a right. Great experience. Yeah. And two years, every mm. Sunday morning, I mm. was going. All Souls is on uh, Lexington Avenue and 79th Street. Uh -huh. And then one Sunday morning for the last reading, Mm -hmm. they said, and now we're going to read from the Urantia book. Really? At the Unitarian? At the Unitarian. And yeah. I said, U Urantia, maybe that's Eastern Indian. It's a name mm. I've never heard of, yeah, Urantia. Yeah. And so he started reading <coughs> a couple of paragraphs from the Urantia book. This would have been how long ago, Nick? This would have been about 18 years ago. 18, okay. Yeah. And, right. and, and he read, he was reading that, and it was literally, Harold, like laser beams to my soul mm -hmm. and my, my brain. It was the most unbelievably dynamic, mm -hmm. forceful, loving, mm -hmm. powerful thing I've ever heard in my life. Spiritually loaded with meaning. Boy, was it. Yeah. It was. And I, I remember when, it, when he finished it, I was absolutely stunned. Yes. More yeah. than anything else I've ever heard. Really? Okay. It truly was that. And, I, and yeah. I thought, the one thing I've got to do is remember that name, how to spell it, mm -hmm. and try to find out more about it. How do you spell it? U-R-A-N-T-I-A. -A, Those who are observing may see. U-R-A-N-T-I-A. -A, the right. Urantia book. 
And the word Urantia uh, means our planet Earth, yes, according uh -huh. to the spiritual beings mm -hmm. that were coming through the sleeping subject. Okay, that's what we got to get to. And so you picked up on that, and then you probably found the book rather quickly. Boy, did I. And yeah. uh, I found the there people was, mm -hmm. who, um, who were at a uh, uh, health expo, mm -hmm. uh, uh, life expo exhibit at, at the... Um, I think it was the New Yorker Hotel. Yeah, it would be right over here from right. near where I live. Yeah, right. And so a I lot of new there. age stuff goes there. In yeah. the back of my mind, I was I was thinking that, but I was I was actually there because um, uh, my male lover at the time mm -hmm. had AIDS and was really in very bad shape. Yeah, right. That's and very. He, he asked me if yeah. I'd go there and take a look at some of the newer uh, information about AIDS, AIDS research. Yeah, right. So yeah. I really was there for him. It was, it was virulent there at the beginning. It was awful. It was, nobody before knew Before ACT UP and everything, before they really got some action going on oh, it, they, they were able to do things with cocktails and so forth now, which is an advance, but it was horrible. Yeah. It was a nightmare. Yeah. It was an absolute yeah. nightmare. Yeah. And for the, uh, the gay community, which was the first community that really got hit with that right, part. Right. It was like a war, yeah. an unbelievable yeah, war. So, yeah. so I went there uh, for Jeff, well. uh, and I did find what he wanted. Uh -huh. But then there was another big room, and it said spiritual. <laughs> and I looked in, and all the way in the yeah. very back was a big sign that said Urantia. All right. Uh. So like a heat-seeking missile, mm -hmm. I went right for it. And mm -hmm. I remember there were people that were trying to give me other materials. Yeah, I said, thank oh, you, yeah, thank they're you. passing but, it on. But they couldn't stop me. I was yeah. going right for it. Laser beam, yeah. And uh, I, I said, I need to find out about this book. And that, was that the first time you were able to get the book in your hand and start reading yourself on your own? Absolutely. Rather? Okay. Absolutely, because I was really very occupied with yes, what was going Jeff, on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... So um, they said, well, you know, uh, first they introduced themselves, mm -hmm. and they said, um, you know, in five minutes we are going to be on the main stage. We only have a half an hour there, mm -hmm. and it's only once this weekend, and you're hitting it right at that time. Okay, see, that's a sign. Well. That's a sign, well, brother, yeah, yeah. So I said, <laughs> well, fine. So mm -hmm. I went in there, and mm -hmm. I actually sat kind of in the back yeah. because I wasn't sure what I was getting into in a, a way. A lot of people there? Uh, there, yes, there were a fair number. hundred and, maybe or something? Uh, not, not that many. Not many. But, okay, I got you uh, right. Okay, uh, yeah. Number. And so I sat, yeah. I sat kind of a little in the back, mm -hmm. and um, they started just talking about this book. Talking about the book, not reading from it. They no, could. No, they, they really were talking about their lives and how it affected them. So why don't we talk about the book a little bit? Sure. Okay, right sure. here and now, because you've uh, taken from there. You're not one of the readers. And there's a group that gets together to read the book. The Urantia book, if I'm, I looked it up in Wiki in that, and I've looked at Excellent. the book, I've looked at it, and it's very, very uh, incredibly huge amount of information that's conveyed. But it goes back to Chicago, and if I understand, let me, you set me straight, okay? Uh, 1911, as early as 1911, culminated around 1935 or so at a certain level. But there was a person who, uh, a doctor, there was a doctor, um, William Sadler? William Sadler and his wife, I think, and he was a, a doctor who was very critical of mediums. He'd written a book uh, being critical of the mediums, and he had in some of his writings, but there was one thing that he could not get his mind around and so forth, and that was that there was a man that he and his wife had been, they had been called attention to, of, uh, is called by some, Wilfred Kellogg is sometimes the name brought up, that this person was who went into a went into a, uh, a somnambulistic state, a, a sleeping state, mm -hmm. and through him came words that were being channeled, or it would be called channeled for people who are involved in the world of spiritual that, uh, which came to be taken down and became the text of what is the Urantia book, talking about the universe and universes and the very large, overwhelming uh, ob uh, 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 content of the structure of reality in a very large context. Is that part of the, of the reality that was there? And the Urantia books, the Urantia book is largely through him, although they don't know for sure, and they don't want to have him identified because they don't want to be a, a cult built around it or something, and they don't, and that, and that also that the, me, the message that came were from groups, like if I got from the reading, that there were groups of people, but that's a, a layman's stumbling effort to try and understand. You, you did, set me straight. You did. You did very well with all all that. Um, okay. Doctor Sadler really uh, truth mattered to him very much. Yeah, he was on a man many of science. Levels, yeah, uh, quite quite upset with all the charlatans at that time. Right, who mediums. Were yeah. Mediums that yeah. were you know uh, 
taking money from people yeah. and extorting them. And, and he was really outraged by that. And mm. he set out that if he saw that, he'd identify who that was. Mm -hmm. And one time there was a story that he stood up in a theater where they were doing some, some charlatan sort of work, uh, yeah. and he, he saw a wire and he stood up and got his scissors and cut it, yeah. and the woman on stage actually screamed and passed out because he had found what was the fake part uh -huh. of it. And then he went up on the stage, because he was a doctor, yeah. to help her. Yes, right. Which is Unbelievable. Uh, so, I fixed a broken leg. <laughs> and so, so, but he really was, uh, but always in searching for truth. Yes, right. And yeah. so, and uh, a man of great integrity. Yes, he uh -huh. was and respected. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, um, uh, and a medical doctor like. And you his said. wife also. Absolutely. Was she a doctor also? Yes. Not? Yes. Okay. And good. so, when this uh, this woman uh, said that there is uh, her husband was going into a trance-like state mm -hmm. and would not be able to wake up once mm -hmm. he was in that state, right. and was saying things that weren't even possible for him to know or say. Right. And she was very upset about that. Right. And said, Dr. Sadler, could you investigate this? And he said he would. Mm -hmm. And he did. And That's the one that he could not explain away as charlatanism. Not, he could not find anything uh, uh, other than the man was saying things that were coming through this man yeah, like from, from what were reported to be other entities. Right. And those entities were talking through this man and saying things and information that this man would never ever know. That wouldn't have, he wasn't particularly educated or anything, and it was also in very good language. I mean, the language is rich and it, it makes and hangs together as a system. We would say in scientific terms. Absolutely did, right. and, yeah. and Sadler was um, um, amazed and mm -hmm. was and dug deep because mm -hmm. he was no fool. So right. he stuck with in it. In fact, he was in trying to uh, trying to show up that there were people who were charlatans, and he was. Skeptical to the max. So yeah. it couldn't have been a better person yeah. to investigate this. Uh -huh. So not not a month or a year, but many years. Mm -hmm. He was he was con constantly doing this, mm -hmm. and uh, this information was coming forward. And at the time, uh, Sadler uh, wanted uh, some of his patients. Mm -hmm. He wanted to um, n after he worked with them. He just didn't want them to fade into the background. Right. He asked his wife if they could invite the patients to his living room. He had a very nice house uh -huh. in um, uh, Chicago. Right. And, they, and on Sunday, they'd have a tea mm -hmm. and just to kind of keep in touch. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, not only did they come, but that grew to their own friends uh -huh. and then doctors and lawyers and just other friends of theirs would all come to their living room and talk about uh, spiritual things, about politics, a number of, of anything interesting at the time. Of, at the time. And it would be focused a little bit on the, the message that are coming through this person and also asking questions, if I understand. Well, well what, what happened was that on one of the times when Sadler was with the sleeping subject, that's mm -hmm. his name, uh, that's the only thing The only saying. thing, now this name Kellogg is uh, in the wiki, but you, I know that there's a, a reluctance to oh. identify it with a particular person, but normally in normal society, if there's this word was coming, the central uh, line, the central issue would be who was it? We had Jesus, we had other people that have been able to come with That's different right. kinds of uh, messages, and we usually concentrate on the messenger. Muhammad is pretty well known as the person through which it came and so forth. But for some reason, the Orientalist people, uh, as they say, this Wilfred Kellogg might have been his name, the person who had these uh, dreamlike states that Mr. the Dr. Sadler and so forth did, but for some reason you don't want to identify him, maybe because you don't want him to be turned into a cult or something. Or well, well, why the, do they not uh, focus on who the person was through which this message was coming? Excellent question. Mm -hmm. And the, the spiritual entities did mm -hmm. not want this man identified. And the man, when he woke up, wouldn't remember a thing. Yeah, and he had no particular interest in None it. None at all, was which, was, which was, in a way, the perfect person to have this information coming through mm -hmm. because this man did not identify uh, or in any way uh, say that that information was coming from him. Did they have any recording devices at that time? Not video, but did they have a, a wire recorder or a tape recorder or something where what he was doing while he's sleeping could be recorded and played back to him when he's in the altered state? As far as we know, that didn't happen. Why? And uh, everything even written was eventually, uh, the entity said, must be destroyed must be uh, destroyed, so there was nothing left except the words of the book. Uh, Why? The words because of the they, book that came through him? Uh, it, it eventually came through him, okay. but it was through him, not from him. That's a really major okay, difference okay, there. Okay, and it was coming from, and it were groups. 
or something because the way the universe is set up there are groups of spirit entities or something that is communicating with us about larger realities and that's part of what the Urantia experience is about I understand that's exactly right and uh -huh. they, they, the spiritual entities did never uh, identify uh, themselves with their particular names mm -hmm. but but really what their the committee uh, of something or the it was that and also was was their function yeah was their function like the ancients of days mm -hmm. like uh, uh, other names that would be about their position but mm -hmm. never the personal names okay. they wanted that to be and they uh, were very guarded about that and didn't want one person to ever be the person that wow he's the one that all came through that so was very guarded from them first and wow. then they agreed that that would be the situation maybe they were in touch with the notion of some sort of a collective consciousness rather than an individual ego identified consciousness that we're all hung up on well that maybe maybe yeah okay so so what happened was that Sadler who, who could not crack this on his own. Yeah. He, he didn't see this as anything but Much the as truth he tried. Much as he tried. All the time. Yeah. So he started talking about this mm -hmm. to the group of friends that were assembled in his home on Sundays, uh -huh. afternoons for tea. Uh -huh. And they, they were listening intently, and they said, well, this is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. I mean, how long have you been doing this? And it was years. Yeah. So um, Sadler was sharing that with them and they kept asking Sadler more about this because yeah. it was fascinating. Absolutely. Well, and the words hung up, ha had together yes, and formed a, coerce, a, a coherent notion of things on a very large universal tablet of understanding the universe and even universes as I understand. That's true. Which interesting begins to relate to superstring theory that's coming out of physics now. Right now. That we're likely in a multiverse kind of universal situation with this universe being one among others and so forth. So the physics is maybe catching up with the reality that was being revealed through this man. That's exactly right. And mm -hmm. that's a very exciting part too is that uh, scientists now who yes. read the Urantia book, yeah. uh, they're getting information that maybe we should go in this direction. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say we're, they're going to give us unearned information, mm -hmm. but they do say look perhaps in a certain direction. They're, mm -hmm. they're giving little hints. Mm -hmm. And so there's even a group of, sci of scientists and uh, uh, people who are looking for uh, scientific I evidence that now have a, uh, a newsletter. And that goes out to other scientists. Yeah. And they talk about what, what the book says and how that's related to current research. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting. They're sharing that. Well, that would be really good. And they could also say there are uh, anomalies that don't hold up because this says this and that is wrong. The Urantia says this, but science proves that that's not the case. So they got a skeptical view of a scientific concern for it, but it's being taken up by increasingly scientific-minded realists. Uh, rather than uh, spiritualist. Exactly. It, yeah. go, it goes the limit. It, could, it, it goes into religious. It goes into uh, the Political. history of our planet. Mm -hmm. It goes into some of the governments of other realms, right. which is quite amazing, and I recommend that. I think yeah. you'd find that incredibly fascinating. Well, the whole thing is, in, is fascinating if you get into it. Oh, it certainly is. Now, so, so Sadler... On one of the time later on, when he's been examining this man for many years, yeah. and through this man, one of the entities said something to the effect, why are you asking such trivial questions mm -hmm. when you could be asking deeper questions uh, uh, and we'd, we would be able to answer them? Mm -hmm. Well, Sadler was taken back mm -hmm. with that yeah. and also challenged. Mm -hmm. And he thought about that, and w the Sunday came, and he said to the uh, people coming to his home. And we're talking in the 20s, 30s now? They had a yes. culmination around 1935 of certain messages or something, if I read right. Right, right, right. So it would, it would, be, it would be in the late 20s and 30s uh -huh, at okay. that time. You can okay. imagine. Right. Uh, it sounds like a science fiction yeah. movie right Well, now. it does, doesn't it? And there's a lot of people like Heinlein and, uh, you know, uh, Arthur C. Clarke and a lot of science fiction that makes a lot of sense. It certainly does. Because it's in advance of the mundane source of notions of reality, which are all wrapped up in politics and economics and so forth. Well, that, there are exactly larger right. realms of which we are inherently a part. Mm -hmm. And people are interested in that, and the wisdom schools have all dealt with that. It's like in a religious sense, or we have to deal with it, whether you think of it as a religion, maybe they want to avoid that. But I, I didn't mean to get you off course. No, no, not at all, not mm -hmm. at all. Um, so, so what happened mm -hmm. was that Sadler... Uh, with, with the people that were assembled at his home, 
said, they have just said to me mm -hmm. that I was asking questions that perhaps were a little trivial, mm -hmm. and perhaps a deeper question would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. So Sather said, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, let's get together and fashion every question you can think of that we'd really like to know. If you had the opportunity to ask anything in the universe, what would you, what would you ask? Well, if I would do it, I would ask, what's your economic policy? Because I happen, to be, I happen to be all wrapped up in a critique of the labor theory of value, and I think we ought to get this system right. But that's because I'm mundane in that, although I would do it. Or, no, it would be things like, uh, what's the nature of reality or something like that, there something epistemological or ontologic or something. You they know. did that. What's it all about, Alfie? I could what's have said. it all about, yeah. Alfie? Mm. Uh, it, who, was, who was Jesus? Who yeah, were the that other kind prophets? of thing. Right. Um, uh, do we when we die? What uh, is it? Yeah, that after the end, life, or yeah. is there more to it? Right. And if there is, then what is it? Uh -huh. uh, are there angels? And if there are, are, do we have such things as guardian angels? Mm -hmm. Is that real or is yeah. that fantasy? What's the nature of the universe? The we don't mm -hmm. understand it very well. Uh, according to the reality and according to what comes out through the your answer book is very much more lively than we might have thought. That's, boy, that's yeah. the truth. Yeah, okay. So, so questions about our own history of our planet, mm -hmm. about the tribes, about who said what to whom, about uh, how things happen. Or the tribes of the universe and the entities and, and, and inhabit, inhabited planet systems or other systems in universe and the Milky Way within larger universes and mm -hmm. all these kind of large issues that would be interesting to any intellectually curious person. Where are we uh, in, the, uh, in the Milky Way, and where is the Milky Way in reference to the universe, and are there other universes? And where would God be? Is God in a particular place? And where would that be? All these kinds of questions. Right. Unbelievable questions. How does this stack up against the so-called wisdom schools, the Vedic, you know, uh, or, 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 or Buddhism, or Ju Judaism, or any uh, Tao, the Tao, or Shinto, or any of that. How does it stack up in terms of those efforts to try and understand these larger spiritual issues that have been probably part of our consciousness since Cro-Magnon caves? We had self-reflective consciousness out of the evolutionary process. So how does it stack up in terms of a explanation of what's it all about? I, I think it's more detailed and mm -hmm. much more expansive. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's that's the good news and the bad news. Good news because if you want to dig deep, you can go real deep in this book. You can. I looked at it. You go into everything. I mean, every, they got an explanation of everything. Some of it seems a little strange to me. They go into large time dimensions and so forth. That's right. And maybe we could begin with that. How does What's the layout? Have you got four chapters or four groups or something? How, what's the layout of the book? That's exactly so right. And no, uh, just take to tell you very quickly that mm. the Urantia book has four major sections. You're absolutely right on that. Uh -huh. And they are part one, the central and super universes. So that's the huge picture of everything. Yeah. And they say that there are seven super universes. Seven super universes. Now, we're in a universe called uh, the one we're in, 13.7 or 8 billion years now, Big Bang. We got all this understanding of physics telling us that, that kind of thing. That's what we're concerned with. But there is super string theory, the mathematics of which says there will be multi universes. So well, there will be others. Saying, they're suggesting there are, and indeed, there are seven. They're, they're saying so seven, that, and they're laid out in a uh, sort of a circle like this. Like if you were to look at it, they're like all seven are like that. And in the center of it all is what they call the Paradise Isle, where God resides. Uh, Paradise Isle, that is not our universe. That's another universe, Th that another would be the level. the center of all the universes. And we would be one of those. In the outer it, part of one of them, and we are in the Milky Way. And we're in the Milky Way. On, a, on kind of an yeah. obscure corner of it. Yeah, okay. When you really look at the, uh, you think, boy, do I feel small. Wait a minute, I wanted to be the center of all the universe. <laughs> but apparently of, we're not, according to your answer. Right, right, although that doesn't mean that we're uh, so far away that we're far away from God. They said that God resides in every being and that you don't, you don't have to think that he's in the clouds or somewhere far away, he's within each one of us. Well, there's a lot of spiritual traditions that go along with that. I mean, so it relates. And so what, what, when they're putting it out in such detail, like the CIA doesn't want to let you know things <laughs> because if you get the, they know the details, but you're not going to be able to handle the details, so they keep things secret. Carp They're secret. mentalized though. Yeah, carp oh yeah, specialization. But the thing is, they do it. And so, in this case, they p lay out a premise about the way things are, and it, they could put dates on it. They got the, it w when did everything come into being, and that sort of thing. And these are things that could be brought up and put under a telescope or a microscope and examined in great detail and used by skeptics to say, 
this doesn't fit with our understanding of physics or with our understanding of anything that would leave them open for skeptics to uh, come in with a bulldozer to the whole system, if you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. But they seem to have laid it out that way, if you understand what I'm saying. Yes, yes. And the, and the other part of that is that when there's, uh, you're reading a, a particular paragraph, and it will get, you're reading it, and many times you'll have, that will give you a question in your mind. Yeah. Well, guess what? The next paragraph is the almost the answer to what you're thinking. Yeah, it, yeah, it did. Yeah, you're right. Amazingly mm -hmm. so. And this goes throughout the 2,000 pages of this book. It's 2,000. That's another big fat tome, huh, Mr. <laughs> Gibbon? Do you remember uh, Alfred, uh, Gibbon, you know, talking about the Roman Empire? But yes, uh huh. But but that's why it's a, it's an amazing, uh, just the craftsmanship of the and book. And this, this 2,000 pages were put together from the stenog stenographer-like kind of taking down of the words of this person who was in that state back in the uh, 1911 to 1935, 45 period. Which apparently was period. written um, in pencil on, on on lined paper, and I believe there's almost five, there were almost 500 pages that this man somehow managed to do, and Sadler got them. And as, and they were as they were looking through it, the man it was, who did the stenographer, the, the, sleeping, the sleeping subject. Well, how did he do it? He would have been asleep. He couldn't have been writing it down. We Somebody must have taken it down. Don't know. Don't know. And there That's was no guarded. recording device. No, that was uh, that, that was guarded because again, there were recording devices in 1920. There were. Wire, w w wires you could record to sound on and other systems, as I think. As far as we know, mm -hmm. that, that... There were dictaphones. There were. Mm -hmm. There certainly were. But Why as far didn't as they we use know, them? Good question. I don't know. Ma unless they were just being so careful about the careful information. Careful about guarding his... his against uh, identifying him in a, uh, in a, in a, in a uh, I don't know, cult kind of way. Maybe trying to avoid that? I think perhaps that's that part of it. That gets to be it. a problem. People want to know who is the cult leader that I can get behind and that kind of thing. They want, maybe it had to do with that lack of appreciation for ego that we're so called. Right, that, well, right. that's part of it. And that fame could well. and fortune and all of that. Although, Ma again, money, that maybe? subject didn't seem yeah. to care about that at all. But, right. but they, they were very, um, how shall I say this, trying to do what the entities were saying when they were, were coming through this man and saying that this is, is, is information that um, it should be looked at carefully. And they wanted reaction from the uh, people, Sadler and the group, mm -hmm. uh, of did they understand what was now, being what written? Now, what was the reaction at the time? We're talking now in the 20s, and again, 35 comes to my mind. That's the year I was born, so it made me stick in my mind and everything. But what was the reaction of A, the scientific community, let's say B, the political community, C, the uh, spiritually inclined committee, uh, community to the uh, assertions that were coming out of the early putting together of what was to become the Urantia book. What was the reaction of society to this? Did they say, well, that's just all nonsense, or what did they say? What happened mm -hmm. was that Sadler, when he was giving this information mm -hmm. to this group, mm -hmm. said to them, you must promise that you won't reveal any of this to anyone not your families or anyone else. You must take a vow of secrecy because we don't want this, this is just too new, and we want to go through it, and besides that, more information was coming. Well, that's a lot like what the CIA tells us. Well, when they say, you won't understand why we have to drop the bombs on those people, but we must because there's some, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, of it's course, like, of You course. understand, right? So yes, for I a skeptical do. mind, they would say, why don't we just uh, come clean, Mr. Kellogg? Or whatever. Was, well, we don't you know understand was, what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know if it was Kellogg at all, but but the, the thing was that they had to be secretive about this because do other this other was do other, his name comes up in Wiki as the person who was the sleeping uh, prophet. There were and other people. And other do other names come up? Do we have a list of names that we could run down the biography of and There's find out a, who the person was so that we could get this question and we could present to the world that this came through like it does with Seth? in Jane Roberts and other gurus or Krista Murde or something like that, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that we get down to who the heck it is. Right. Uh, you know what? You I know, uh, they want to avoid that. Right. It, it makes people wonder. Well, you know what? Mm. The, the bottom line is they said that the book should stand on its own merits. Okay. That, the, that everyone should, when they're reading this, should decide for themselves. Yeah, that's right, because the words are down on paper, aren't they? they and they are. could be considered. They are, and, okay. and does it resonate to you as okay. a person? Okay, that's right. So that's the okay, bottom line is to be that. Said that was for the that. most important let thing. The, let the message stand for itself. You don't, have, you don't have to worry who Muhammad was. The message. Does the message make sense and does it hold up? What now, does saying? the message make sense and does it hold up? To you, exactly. No, to you it does, apparently. 
but to others and to society in general. Is there likely to be an increasing look at this as something that gives some explanation for major changes that are going on as we all pay attention to who's voted president and the kind of normal uh, reporting of the news and reality from that perspective? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. And Could there's, there's so much it? in here yeah. that deals with that and deals with uh, integrity and truth and how other governments of other places work. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that's a blueprint for maybe uh, what we should be doing that we're not. Yeah, it but goes into that also. How much does it hold up to the scientific community that would have been reading, let's say, what is coming down in a way that makes sense, one, chat, one thing after another, answering, answering, answering. And then they say they come up with something that's so outlandish that it can't have anything to do with reality. It's just... It's just fantasy. It's just fantasy. Let me give you one. There good must example. have been a lot of people who took that view because it's not like there's been a huge followership. Right. Well, what happened was that as again, there may be emerging now. Until 1955, mm -hmm. when the the book was actually published it and was, then given to the public. It, w it had a copyright that's run out now. It's public domain now. It's now public domain. Right. But it was first published in 1955. And you tell me as, before, as a book, as something that 55. could be. 55. What was it? How was the word getting out, say, in 1935, or when they were putting it together? It wasn't. It was just a small group of people, it was a, a cult, small group like of people, people who. Uh, well, their job. Like a coven of witches or something. Well, <laughs> or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right? it, what what mm. they did is they examined what yeah. was coming through, mm -hmm. and then these people said, you know, that leads to the following question questions, and mm -hmm. they would list then other questions that would be logical. And those inputs from those people who did that become part of the Rancho book? Then it went back uh, to, to the sleeping subject and were then given to that sleeping subject. So it sub all comes from the sleeping subject, the sleeping prophet. Well, through the sleeping subject. Everything that's in there comes from the prophet. F from the, the, from the spiritual entities the that spiritual were going through. The spiritual entities that are behind and coming through the spiritual, the, the uh, personage of the sleeping prophet. Uh, let's call him Kellogg, you say no, but whoever it was. There was a human being that it was coming through. Absolutely Like was. Mohammed was. Right, we know he was uh, married, that he had a wife, and then mm -hmm. he lived in Chicago. That was and he didn't pay any attention to what was said. And, uh, and there's no record of his reaction to the people saying, we're taking all this down and it's really incredible what you say. And he was just blasé about that. He didn't have any, uh, do you have any little, record of that? Little, Did anybody write a biography of Kellogg or I of the people who were reported? Uh, avoided any, any uh, information about the sleeping subject because they were asked to not do that. And they, they honored that, that, not, that they wouldn't do that. And so, and so those records were, uh, weren't available. There was a small group of people that were then saying, okay, wow, that's an amazing amount of material. And that leads us to these questions. They would feed it back. Sadler would go back. Mm -hmm. And then Sadler would put these new questions mm -hmm. uh, to the sleeping subject, and then oh, more he, he w there, there was back and forth in the sleeping state. You would talk to him, and then he would talk back. I would like to have videotape of that, oh wouldn't boy, you? Who wouldn't wouldn't you that? like to have videotape of sure. that? Sure. In fact, I'd like to have high definition videotape <laughs> of that process. We had others. We had uh, Joseph Smith seeing things in tablets up in New York and forming the Mormon Church. And people have that kind of thing. It's been there. Mm -hmm. Is it in that or Christian science? Other offshoot religions that have emerged or cults that emerge around particular people who think they're in touch with God and that kind of or thing. Or downloads. They feel as though they've been downloaded with some right. information. Or they call it uh, channeling. It's, it's called channeling, where they channel a different level of consciousness. Right. Isn't it? Funny that this book says that it, they, they actually say it wasn't channeling as we know it. They, they made a point of that, uh, that it wasn't that channeling. It wasn't that way. Mm -hmm. but, but obviously information, huge amounts of information. Huge amounts, yeah. Which is no uh, understatement at all, was, was going through this man. And that went through a process that culminated in the first publication of the book in 1955. And at that point, some of the people uh, sent these books to uh, their, their pastors, their, their uh, uh, rabbis. I believe they sent copies to the Vatican. They, they were sending... How about sending them to Massachusetts Institute of Technology or uh, the scientific community or centers of scientific research? Oh, I imagine they did that. They, and to the political group. Because it affected all What was all the attitude groups? of the society? What, did, what about the journalistic community in terms of reviewing books? The, the intellectual community in large. Mm -hmm. well, how, what was the reaction mm -hmm. to it early in 1955? We had McCarthy then, remember? We were all concentrating on That's and right. that kind of thing. And, you know, the politics is always in the in the front of everybody's conscience still is, you know? It's a, such a huge amount of information. I think, I think that the, the uh, religious groups and also I think the scientific groups yeah. were some of the first groups to really 
take a deep look at this. Oh. One of the things in the book, give you an example, said mm. that, again, this is information in the 20s and 30s, yeah. said that your planet, Earth, Urantia, yeah. your once is was Earth, one yeah. continent. Uh -huh. One continent. Now, well, there was Ghana no Wanda scientist Land, yeah. in his right mind mm -hmm. who would have went along with that. Well, you, of course they would. They'd all know Ganawanda Land. It was one continent at one time. But, we but all know at, that from geology. But, uh, at, but at that time, they, they would think one continent for the entire planet doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. They would have fought you on that. But the Urantia clearly says, no, it was that at one point. Well, now we know the answer is, yes, it was. And yeah. every, every well, scientist right. will accept that now. But yes. then, it w but in the book, it was... R well, Black how about white. something that is more outlandish? Let's say, when did everything begin? How long? How old is the universe or the multi-universe? How many trillions of years does it go? When did humanity evolve? Does it involve? We're understanding more humanity, evolution. We come out of evolution. We understand those things. How does it comport with the reality in broad, general terms that we understand from scientific? enlightened understanding that's advancing and advancing very rapidly now as we move through time. As, well, here we are, mm -hmm. okay, and at this time, the scientific information, the um, uh, history of the planet, as uh -huh. they're saying it, which was very cutting edge, and a lot of it we didn't know. There's a lot of surprises in the book. Uh, it's, it's slowly finding that, yes, that's right that, oh boy, that is true, that there, there is that sort of uh, uh, the, the black uh, energy they're talking about in, in space. Dark, yeah. And w now we have words for it. But well, that's time, because we have the physics. That's what I'm saying. The, the, the ev evolution of our understanding, how does it comport with the reality that's in the book? And uh, more to the point, maybe, how many things are there that are totally outlandish and will never comport with reality because it is out of touch with reality, which would t be taken by skeptics to say the whole system falls because you don't have the nail for the horseshoe for the knight to win the kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, in a I systems do. way. How many things have they done that are so outlandish that they cannot be, or just uh, in in the fullness of time, will be shown to be outlandish, and the man was uh, possessed of something strange. <laughs> right. You know, you know what I'm no, saying. Absolutely, yeah. it's a good oh. question, yeah. and I think I think first of all, you have to go on so far at this time, uh, <coughs> at, uh, almost almost 2010. Here we are, mm -hmm. and so far, <coughs> the, what the book is saying, nothing has been prove to be wrong yet. Okay, what, how does thing it's been confirmed, bing, 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 mm -hmm. that th this is like awesomely accurate. Okay, does it comport with the notion we would generally understand that our universe is 13.8 billion, 7 billion years? They took a picture of the shock wave uh, within 200,000 years of its occurrence with the telescopes. They're going to do it from the telescope in CERN. They're going to take a picture of the shockwave, the beginning of our universe within a nanosecond when they get fired up again. Mm -hmm. So we're taking the measure of things. We're understanding things. We're understanding evolution. We're understanding genome, all mm -hmm. kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And is there, does it hold up? The answer is... What is the beginning of our universe? What, what, what date would come down for the beginning of the universe okay. and how off was he? Okay, well, that information, what you're saying, um, it's, it's very specific in the book, and what readers have done, in some mm -hmm. cases they're scientists or mm -hmm. researchers, uh -huh. that they have gone page by page mm -hmm. through this book, mm -hmm. and every time there is a date in a particular event or a particular uh, of note, something uh -huh. going on, they've made charts. I've seen the charts, mm -hmm. and they are available on the internet. Mm -hmm. They okay. go for pages, as you can imagine. Yeah. Go, it goes on and on, uh, and it, but it's very specific stuff. And what does it show? I mean, what's the pattern that shows? Does uh, it have a date for the beginning of our universe? It, yes, it that does. That comports with yes, 13.8 billion, does. 7 billion. Uh, that billion. particular date, I'd have to go looking at Well, that's at something we have a common understanding of and so forth, you know? But uh, you'd have to, um, you Or know. does it have a beginning of humanity? 200,000 years ago, we evolved. All, we all know the, that uh, now. All the, uh, those dates you're speaking of, mm -hmm. it, it, they're all, as for, according to the Rancher book, mm -hmm. they're all in chart form that goes on for literally page after Do page. Do they comport? Does it come up saying that hom humanity evolved about uh, Homo sapien as a species 200,000 years ago in Africa? Yeah. Would I, it get I down really, to I, that kind of thing? I or would it say, no, it was six trillion years? Right. Now, I, we know that's not true. Do you understand what I'm trying to get yeah, of at? Of course, of okay. course. And I just, at, at this point, I would, I would want to re go to the research and go to the charts to make sure I'm answering that exactly. Well, I just want a pattern. You don't have to go to a specific. I'm saying, is there anything of, of out of sync with anything that could comport with anything like reality? 
Yeah. As far as I know, the answer is that it's it's, it's deadly accurate and that they That's they're very amazing. specific. And, okay. and the thing is, and the proof would yeah. be to go to these again multi-level charts, which are there, and they're also now available on the internet mm -hmm. because this book is being read all over the yeah, world. Yeah, it's being translated in every language in the world, apparently. They're working on, um, I think it's they're working on the Japanese and the Chinese, Chinese now. It's going to get to China. We're in trouble. I, I think I mean, they got all our T-bills. Now they're going to get all our philosophy. I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't let that go or something because we're in competition with the Chinese, right? I think this could only do wonderful things for any people that ever read it. It, yeah. would, make, it would make any, any person or any country more sensitive mm -hmm. to the fact that we are all brothers mm -hmm. and that we have a loving father. Does it, in, does it, does it include uh, where does sin come from and the black side of human nature? It goes into that. It goes into uh, uh, the, the, the choices that we have as mm -hmm. free will creatures mm -hmm. and that we That's all... That's a big assumption, free will, yeah. Well, okay. but that we, that we are, are responsible Mm -hmm. for our That decisions. is another big assumption in the case of some people I know, but oh, go ahead. Well, okay. yeah, um. But that we are responsible and that we are free will creatures and that that is guarded, uh, that is very high up there as a, as a priority, that they're, they're not telling us to do this, do that, or you know, that they're not putting mandates there. They're saying that you know right from wrong and mm -hmm. that and that God is is within you. Okay. And that you okay. need to tune into that. Now, one of the problems with doing a program, we could talk to you for 27 hours yes, without a stop. Could. Right? <laughs> we could very easily because it's very interesting. We're going to get into your ranch. And you read these things. You have a reading group. You meet down on Crosby Street, right? Now, there, you could say that quick to let the audience oh, know. Yeah. Uh, would you welcome people to come to the reading group or not? Or are you trying welcome. to keep people away? No, no. No, you want people in fact, to come. In fact, it's, it's our honor. Mm -hmm. to, to say that if you're interested in this book, mm -hmm. we, we certainly will be there for you to answer questions, to mm -hmm. do anything we can. All the study groups throughout the United States and the world There's are free. There's a bunch free. of them, right? There's a huge amount. No cost? None. No cost, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> no cost. Because, and no obligation. That's a miracle in itself, yes, right? It is, yeah, especially yeah. today. Yes, well, I don't know. The internet could work well. But they really wanted to be... Um, uh, they want it to be free, and they want and they want people to, uh, if if they choose to look at this book, and if they have questions, we try our best to answer them or right. to find out the answers through like through what we're doing here in a minimal way. Exactly. Okay, that's very good, and you do it down on Crosby Street. Could Crosby you let Street. them know that quick? Just do it quick, because right. we want to show a couple of images you yes, have on your do. computer uh, right, too. Right. And the problem is time. time. As usual, we're running out of time. It's Kurt. Always the problem, Nick. You know, there's not enough time in this universe. Well, no. In, in New York City, we have a group that studies this book every mm. Tuesday night. Every Tuesday night? Seven to nine. Seven to nine? And we're going to show at a At 31 number. Crosby? Uh, it would be 41. 41 Crosby Street down in the heart of Soho. That's right. That's a lot right. of good restaurants around where you can get calzone and all kinds of things. It's worth a trip to the yes, Soho. Yes, it is. And, and you would that. be welcomed on the ground floor. It is on the ground floor. There's, there's a sign on the door that will say Urantia. It says Urantia yes, in big does. letters? Does it uh, have it? Enough so you can read it. Why don't you have it up in neon? Well, you it's a private home. Oh, it's a private it's home. It's a private home. And oh, yeah. they are they have the most loving, wonderful couple. Uh, okay. Robin and Helene Jorgensen are their names. Okay, okay. They've been hosting this for 20-something years. Oh, good for them. That's good to know. They're Help amazing. put me in touch with that. I'd like to come sometime, if you don't that mind. That would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I want to try and pick up on it and everything. But, and it's not just all New Age flakes. It's also scientists and people, literary intellectuals. And name, it. It, it, okay. name it. Name it. People from all walks of life mm -hmm. are there. And it's not just guru seekers and stuff. So. Not at all. Uh, okay. Not okay. At all. These are oh. these are real people. Serious and people. They're amazing people. Okay. Now you. I, the trouble is, we're already okay. almost out of time on wow. the program. Can that you believe it? Now, what you have to do, you got a couple of images you want to show, and while you're setting up the computer, they're okay. going to have to come into it. Set it there so everybody can see okay. your ranch, your book. And uh, set it up on the computer, and I'll let them know that he's also part, as he set up the, his uh, laptop, to be able to show that the computer can come in on, uh, you know, on the, uh, he's setting up uh, some pictures, but he's also part of the Disclosure Network New York, and he's a co-founder and director of that. That is our guest, Nick Curto. And that Disclosure Network, you have a site for, uh, I, we got them up at the end, but the, for the Urantia book, it's www.urantia, U-R-A-N-T-I-A-B-O-O-K dot org. It's got a huge database of information there. And for the other, the Disclosure Network New York, 
That's dnny.org, and that has to do with uh, intelligence and universe and some of the things that are uh, messages from the universe and uh, uh, maybe visitations from other civilizations, uh, UFOs, uh, what, uh, Roswell, and uh, some of the things that they're being, uh, E.T. movie, and that we've been visited and we, people can't, be, and the idea that we're in touch with other civilizations and so it, forth. It's a lecture program. It's, it's the first Sunday of each month. That's the first Sunday of each month where? At 2 o'clock to, to 5, mm. and that's at the, uh, the Gay and Lesbian Center at 208 West 13th Street. Okay, those are things that he can find by going there, and then he got his email up. Now, put up your thing. He's going to show. We have his uh, laptop. And we can't put it directly on the screen, but what we can do is he's going to set it up with some pictures, and then the camera, the camera that's on me at the moment, uh, will come in on the picture. He's just setting that up, and it's really interesting, um, interesting uh, stuff. This Urantia book, it's growing. It's now the public. It's now in the public domain. It had been copyright for a while and everything, and it's a very interesting development. And um, I suppose many people are familiar with it, but um, this is something you're having a hard time getting it to come uh, no, up. It just takes a moment. It to, takes uh, a moment. Uh, the technology is moving quickly. Wouldn't it have been great if we could have had this back in <laughs> 1911? Well, that's the and truth. we could have had a camcorder going on all this and recording it all, with all the nuance and so forth. We well. can we can get a hold of all this stuff now and everything, because um, he's still trying to get the picture, trying to do it, and I'm here talking away like a not knowing very well, but it's a really incredible amount of information that's contained at the Urantia book site, including uh, the, the structure of the universe. He, he gets the picture, he's going to show it to us. And uh, there's seven universes, that's interesting, comports with superstring. And it's coming from uh, an, al uh, an altered uh, place of consciousness that has a universal, um, a universal component and so he's just getting it to the beginning of that now. He's got the program up. I can see it scrolling into place, and I think we're almost ready to go. We are indeed, sir. Just okay. give me one more moment, and we'll be ready to go. We're ready and to these go. These are some uh, artist we got conceptions. Of some artist of conceptions are some of the concepts contained in the book about the nature of reality, right? Uh, right, the universe mm -hmm. and so forth. Okay. Now, uh, Is that the first? Here we go. Okay, Let's now see. if you can give them a second or so to come in. You'll see it on the screen when they get the camera that can come in on the image as close as they can. The camera is robotic. You can see the camera coming in. Yes, it's, I do. It's zero. There we go. Now come in tight on that. And now you can talk to that, Nick. And that's okay. the thing that's on oh, the good. computer. Well, and we're well, talking well. with Nick Curto about the Urantia book. Right. Now this is uh, an artist's conception of uh, what they're talking about is the seven super universes. And you can see the seven right around there. And in the middle of all that, of, of the middle of all time and space, is, is the, the Rancher book is saying that's where God dwells. That's really interesting. Where, where do we dwell? Uh, we're again on the one of the which one, one? Of the which one? Uh, which is ours? Where are we? I can't <laughs> see us. Where are we? Uh, where is the Milky which Way? One? Well, we're on one of Just them. Take your pick. And one we're of on them. the outer part of one of them in the Milky Way. Outer way in the Milky Way. Okay. Kind of off broad. It would be off, off, off Broadway in a sense. Well, it is interesting, isn't it? That it, you know we had um, super string theory, the mathematics. You know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Brian Green, is it? Or or Michio Kaku? They talk about the mathematics of it. In, indicate that there are multiverses uh, rather than just this one universe. They're like soap bubbles. They try to describe it as like soap bubbles of ivory snow wow. soap uh, connected. Okay, what is this one now, Okay, Nick? now this, this one is uh, it's called the, the, the Central Universe. And again, the layout, is it's so wonderful. It's concentric rings, mm -hmm. just like the, the Master Universe, uh -huh. it's all concentric rings. And that seems to be what they're reporting as what the layout really looks like. Uh -huh. I mean, how, how amazing is that? Yeah, well, okay, and it our is. scientists yeah. right now are saying that they're, 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 they're seeing that there are other universes out there and they're, they're not, they're, they're exploring this as we go. Of course, the mm -hmm. Hubble telescope. Yes, yeah, right, that's really beautiful photography that, uh, that they get things. I was just in Washington no, a couple weeks far? ago and yeah. uh, saw those photographs, and boy, that's from that's the Hubble, yeah, from the Hubble, and that is that is such an incredible. Now thing you've gone so past some of the I graphics. Know I have. I'll give okay. you one second. I'm sorry. Try to get that. focus now. Focus, <laughs> focus. Um, you know, live TV. Don't you no, love it? Live TV. Is don't the, you love it? Give me just one mm, second now. Uh, we're scrolling yeah. past some of the uh, the thing, and again, we'll I'll give you the the website you can go to to get the 
U-R-A-N-T-I-A-B-O-O-K dot org. And we'll put that up at the end of the graphic. It's coming with an alarming quickness now, like a train <laughs> coming out of the east. And we're here like, um, we only got a couple minutes left, so oh, let's dear. try and get a graphic okay, here quick. Okay, here we go, here we go. Uh, sorry. Here we go. Uh, Haste makes waste, boy, young that, man. That's the truth. Haste makes waste. Okay, so there's the central universe. And there's the, next the central shot. universe, and now we're going to go, and now the clock is ticking. Tick, oh, tick, tick. Tick, oh, tick, the tick, just to... <laughs> the pressure is on, the pressure is on. Uh, okay. Um, okay. This is, this is called, uh, this particular graphic is called Journey to Paradise. Mm -hmm. And it just shows that from our humble beginnings on the planet Earth mm -hmm. and how we travel from various, from our, our small place on the Milky Way, eventually going to the local, the, the minor, the major sector, mm -hmm. and then going on. And eventually, the book says that we will we will be in paradise with God. Okay. And, and then they talk about beyond that to uh, going to other places to spread God's will. That's, a, that's an amazing, amazing thing in itself. Well, that, that comports with reality because the reality is a priori mysterious and we keep coming into higher states of consciousness a long time has a certain direction, or the arrow of time. Some people want to say it's all totally meaningless, but there is an anti-entropic function in the universe, as we're understanding. Mm -hmm. So what is this last thing? Is no, this, th last? this is another uh, artist's uh, conception of uh, the paradise, literally where, where God resides, and it's in the middle of all space and time, and everything revolves around that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one more, I believe. Let me just put that up on the screen for you. And this is an uh, artist's rendition of some of the wisdom that's contained within the Urantia book. I don't think people are going to be able to read that, if that's no, what you mean. It says, a paradise uh, 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 eternal isle is the one stationary and most immense creation in all the universes. Paradise is a real place as well as a spiritual residence. It is a, ma a material world okay. uh, in the shape of an ellipsed disk. Okay, we better start running the graphics in the studio. We're coming to the end of the program, I'm afraid. So if you could come back and just say, we're talking with Nick uh, Curto, who again is a Urantia book reader, and we ought to start running the graphics so we can be sure and get at the end of the graphics roll um, the, uh, the links to, his, um, to his, the sites that are relevant to him. But he's a Urantia book reader, and um, UB New York Outreach Committee, and the site for the Urantia book, again, is U-R-A-N-T-I-A, -A, Urantia, B-O-O-K, all one word, dot org. And he's also part of the Disclosure Network and uh, co-founder and co-director of that. And it's www.dnny.org. And Nick, thank you so much. So good to see you again, it was brother. Wonderful. To we got to we got to start meeting like this <laughs> instead. Of, we'll try to get down to one of those readings. I'd Please like do. To, we would love to It's very interesting. There. It's very deep. It's very conflicting. It's very controversial, and it's growing apparently. It, it is and by it, leaps and bounds. And uh, South America has got a lot of study groups now. That's one of the places it's, it's taking off. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, it'll be interesting to see the reaction of the scientific and the political communities to this idea, because you're dealing with an alternate sense of reality other than the normal, mundane political reality that makes up all the news and so forth. Mm -hmm. And this is a larger context, and everything is happening within a larger context other than the the, the normally. And so these kind of things are really very, very